Law Warrior Online, Pouncer Omnimac. Overview. When the clans recognised the need to change the way they fought if they wished to succeed in conquering the Inner Sphere, Wolf Khan Ulrich Kerensky ordered his technicians to provide his mech warriors with jump-capable Omnimechs, including an old test vehicle named the Pouncer. Redesigned for tougher combat, the Pouncer more than fulfilled its duty in the field. Capabilities The Pouncer is at heart an upgraded variant of the Puma. Five tons more massive than its progenitor, the Pouncer permanently mounts jump jets, as well as two more heat sinks than the Puma. The added jump capability makes the Pouncer a feared opponent. The primary configuration nearly duplicates the Puma's primary version, exchanging the Flamer for an extended range small. Alternate configuration A is an efficient fire support Omnimac with a powerful short range bite, mounting two LRM-15 racks and four extended range medium lasers, along with a rear mounted ER small. Alternate B, another fire support Omnimac, mounts an LRM-10 in its torso and two extended range mediums in its arms. For close in work it relies on two arm mounted SRM-4 racks, but a chronic mechanical failure in the SRM missile feed systems makes this variant the least popular among the warriors. The Pouncer C, designed to serve as part of a fire team, combines a large autocannon with an array of beam weaponry. Configuration D, highly respected in battle, mounts a withering array of six ER medium lasers, their potency enhanced by a targeting computer backed by two Streak SRM-6 racks. The final two significant configurations mount brand new technologies and can deliver a powerful punch at close range. The E mounts two ATM-9 racks, backed up by an ER medium laser and two ER micro lasers. The H configuration, a throwback to the Pouncer D, mounts two heavy medium lasers in each arm, backed by a pair of Streak SRM-6 racks, and a heavy small. Deployment. The Pouncer made its Innisphere combat debut in 3050, but the action on Zetamir during the Refusal War brought the mech clan-wide recognition. The Pouncer remains common only within the split clan wolf, though the Goliath Scorpions also field fair numbers of this mech. Clans Coyote and Star Adder deploy the Pouncer in limited number. Notable Mech Warriors Star Colonel Craig Fetlarl. Once an elemental warrior, Craig suffered injuries on Wotan that prevented him from ever again donning the elemental suit. Instead, he tested out as a mech warrior and piloted his pouncer to notoriety within Clan Wolf in Exile. Commanding the 16th Wolf Guard's battle cluster, he's more than earned the continuation of genetic legacy. Star Captain Oren. An Abataka warrior adopted by Clan Ice Hellion, Star Captain Oren found acceptance of a unique tactical outlook that made her an outcast among Wolf. Favouring speed and mobility over raw firepower, she's made a home among the Ice Hellions, who refitted her personal pouncer with a mask system. Yeah, so remember in the previous clan one where I mentioned the whole, you know, taking an existing design and slightly side grading it? Well, this is another example. The pouncer is, again, another uh, change to the uh, the adder or puma. Uh, the you've seen the sphere designation for some reason. And bef and if you've been tearing your fucking nuts off because I say puma, it's because, and, and I know this is going to blow any, any American's mind who doesn't understand this, but much like saying words like hegemony or aluminium, uh, English, my language, where I live in the country it comes from, we say puma. And I'm not going to tell you to say Puma. You could say Puma all you like. Whatever. I don't give a shit. But don't tell me to say Puma as if yours is right, okay? Let's just get that out the fucking way first. Because I'm getting tired of self-aggrandizing assholes turning up in comments to tell me how to speak the words I've been taught to speak my entire fucking life in my language, okay? Because I ain't turning up on comment boards or videos for American YouTubers and stuff to go tell them, uh, I think you'll find it actually so if they If you say aluminum, fine, you say aluminum. I know exactly what you're talking about. You should know what I'm fucking talking about to say aluminum, okay? Fine, let's put that aside. The pouncer, it looks like a turtle putting its head out of its shell, let's face it. it it's weird little round head on the front. For some reason, though, I kind of like the visual design of this thing. It's uh, it's odd. Oh, and in the earlier write-up, uh, it mentions that it has uh, two extended range mediums. It's actually two extended range large on the B version. Uh, for anyone who's furiously trying to figure out, wait a minute, where the, the weight, where did the excess weight go? No, it's uh, it's written wrong. It's uh, it's two large lasers. It's in the uh, the B write-up. ER large, ER large, one in each arm. Uh, with a bunch of SRMs and stuff. 
Uh, but yeah, th this is another 40 tonner. It's It's got a significant amount of firepower for it. Again, you consider a 40 tonner, uh, let's see, 40 tonners on my head from the Innersphere perspective, even taking into account wall stack equipment. What, Assassin, Vulcan, um, wait, wait, Clint, Hermes 2, uh, Whitworth. I mean, these are like five mechs on hand that would get absolutely trounced by the weaponry of just a prime version of this thing, the Pouncer Prime. ERPPC, ERPPC, ER small for targeting computer. I mean, that's it. It hands down wins that fight. It's got 24 double heat sinks, so it can handle firing at least one of its ERPPCs per turn and still stay under heat, and that's going to be a very accurate shot. The other configurations, a couple of LRM 15s with ER me with four ER mediums and an ER small, I and mean, that's brutal for a 40 tonner. Uh, the B variant is the aforementioned one with SRMs, LRM, and two ER large. The C version with an Ultra 20, but sorry, an Ultra 10 with uh, with 20 shots. Uh, three ER smalls and two ER mediums. Fucking, again, deadly. Uh, the Delta version with uh, two Streak 6s and some ER smalls and ER mediums. You, you get the idea. It paints the picture. Clan tech is just ridiculously dangerous as you go along. Um, <clears throat> and this is jump capable. It only jumps five, but still, it's, it's capable of... Uh, dropping in in an unpleasant location that you wouldn't really want uh, and this is one of the reasons why the only balancing factor on tabletop was the fact that battle value was a thing um, because the actual value of, of the climax was so much higher uh, than uh, in the sphere stuff it meant you could field more in the sphere equipment than you could then clans could field against them because if it was equal numbers, the fight's already over before you started. Because even if you manage to focus fire on a few clan mechs, the clan mechs will just down you so goddamn quick. It's uh, <clears throat> it's absolutely brutal. Ah, uh, I think that's six I've done in a row, so I'm probably just gonna have to leave it there for recording. Oof, yeah, because my my I know my throat's gonna start getting real fucked up, especially with that hitman. Whoa, oh, the hitman really pushed me to the limit going back through it. Oh man. Uh, still, that, uh, trying to say LRM. That uh, caught me out that one, dude. Anyway, thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, minor rant aside about saying Puma. Uh, hope you have a good week, and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.